Welcome to Christ the Lord Clearwater's weekly message. I'm Pastor John Backus here in our studio in Clearwater, Florida, where we share the good news of Jesus on the Gulf Coast. Today's message is a companion to last week where we talked about properly valuing assets. Focused living properly values heavenly assets. Just that idea of a heavenly asset is tricky because usually an asset is something that you own, you claim, you call your own. It's a bearer instrument that you can have, you know, in a sense. But if it's heavenly, that means it's either somewhere else or uh, in a different time that hasn't happened for you yet. Uh, whether it's a different place or a different time, the, as for all practically, practical purposes, it's the same thing. It's like not useful now because it's there or it's then. To help understand what a heavenly asset is and how it's connected to your living day to day, we'll be referencing three somewhat well-known Bible quotes. If you have a background in Christianity, you may be familiar with them. One is from the days of Abraham, 2000 BC, in the writings of Genesis chapter 15. There, uh, God has some teaching for him. He has Abram look at the stars and he wants Abram to see in those stars way beyond his reach, his destiny. No, it's not that Abram's going to be an astronaut. Something else. The second Bible quote we'll weave together here is from Jesus' life and teaching in Luke chapter 12 where he will encourage his disciples to learn from the flowers it's interesting because you might think, ah, oh, forget theology, study biology, forget pastoral training, try natural training, John. There's more to it than that. And then the third Bible quote is from the great heroes of faith chapter in Hebrews chapter 11. As we again look retrospectively back at the life of Abraham and we're told to pay attention to the fact that he camped a lot. He lived in a tent instead of settling down in a city. And maybe you'd say, well, what's the lesson here? Uh, does God value nomads? Does he want me to be transient, moving? Uh, should I be like the little pig in the story of the three little pigs whose house was easily blown over by the wolf? Forget a permanent building. We want you to live in tents if, you're, if you value heavenly things. Now, we're going to look a little deeper in these three stories. When do earthly assets stop being useful and heavenly assets start being useful? If there's heavenly assets that you can claim as your own that are worth something, right, when do they start? The timing can be quite important. Imagine that you're going to cross a border or enter a, a different country and it's taking 14 hours to get there, like when I flew from Chicago to Hong Kong. And imagine if I, as soon as I got on the plane, 14 hours early, I pulled out my passport and I held it up and I said, I'm ready. They're going to need my identification when I go into Hong Kong. Here's my passport. And for 14 hours, I hold up my passport. It, it's a matter of timing. I, I know the passport's important, but I don't quite understand when it's important. So finding the usefulness of things at the proper time is the wisdom we want to take away today. All right, in Genesis chapter 15, uh, and you can read this reference. If you're not familiar with it, I encourage you to. But in Genesis chapter 15, Abram, it seemed evident to him that his family line had reached a dead end. But then the Lord directed him outside at night and told him to look up at the stars. He told Abram, look at the stars and count them if you can. That is how your descendants will be. Instead of Abram's family line coming to a dead end, dying childless with his wife, Abraham's story would be one of a, a legacy that would impact the world eventually through the Messiah. Descendants beyond counting and blessings beyond counting. But just like heavenly assets often seem to be that future that God promised Abraham was not only down the road, it was like way in time, it was out of reach. And maybe the stars are such an apt illustration of a heavenly blessing that's promised, but like you're told it's there, the stars are there, but they're out of reach. Blessings beyond counting, but blessings beyond, of, blessings beyond reach as well. 
The Bible commentary describes the fact that Abraham didn't just have faith, but he lived by faith. The future blessings that heaven promised Abraham started changing his life immediately. This is a, a part of properly valuing heavenly assets, knowing when their usefulness starts and the usefulness of, of heavenly assets, of good things coming from God, do not start just the moment we're done here on earth. In fact, in Jesus' uh, teaching from Luke chapter 12, when he told his disciples, study the flowers for assurance about, f- for knowledge and wisdom about, uh, about your life under God, he, he told them, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these other earthly things will be added to you as well. They weren't to live for the now, now and the later, later. They were to live now with the later in mind because the two are connected. Almost like the further you understand what's going on in the future, the greater a lever it is that impacts your life today. You may think back to your study of of physics or science experiments about how the length of a lever over the the fulcrum point changes the force it exerts on a weight. So if you have a weight you're lifting and you pry on it with a really short lever, it it might not move much. But if you can get a lever that's long, then you've got lots of leverage and then there's a, a huge amount of change of movement or force that's applied Uh, to the object you want to move. And this is the concept of how earthly assets and heavenly assets are properly valued. They are connected to each other. And as we live now but see later what information we have about down the road things, the further we can see the longer the lever gets that impacts and changes our behavior today. The change starts immediately. In fact, if you think to Abraham's life, you may remember that after Abraham was given this promise by God, your future is going to be full of, full of blessings, there's a really short commentary by the author Moses who said, Abraham believed God. He trusted that promise. And it, that faith was credited to him as righteousness. Righteousness means that, that we live up to uh, a standard. And God's standards are holy. He is perfect standards. But because Abraham uh, heard God's promises and they won his heart, they inspired him to trust the Lord. Through that faith, he became an owner now of the asset of righteousness. Righteousness is the, the sense that I'm enough, that I'm accepted, that I'm valued by a higher power, not hated or shunned, that I'm cherished, not a, a whipping boy for the, the cruel plans of an impersonal universe. Abraham believed God as he looked down to the future and that levered something in his story. Now, he gained immediate righteousness through faith in the Savior God's promises. This teaches us that it's not accurate that now stuff is for now and later stuff is for later and you're wise if you use all your now stuff now and time it just right so that as soon as you die you're ready at that moment to transition from the actual practical stuff of daily life like food and clothes and, and enjoying life and then once you get to eternity you worry about eternal things and see what happens, happens then. Instead, we live our heavenly identity right now. That means to live by faith does not mean I think eventually things will change and I'll get better. I think eventually 
I'll experience resurrection. I think eventually I'll be in a better place, free from suffering, maybe maybe a good place, maybe with a good God, maybe back with relatives or friends I care about or with my pet in a pleasant environment. Maybe if I live by faith, someday things will change. Nah. To properly value earthly and heavenly assets means to live by faith means that future truths change me today. Jesus said, if you look at the flowers and see how they're taken care of, the designer of flowers who put their, their code in them to grow and take form and take shape and take s- smell, whoever put that there built a system and uh, flowers survive even though they, they don't really control much of their existence but the world has had flowers as far back as we can go so the flower creator knows how to make sure flowers survive and the people creator knows how to make sure people survive so if you have a heavenly father that made you and you understand that he gets what you need in fact he knows what we need better than we do if you live by faith and trust him you can actually be free right now of worry. Don't need to be afraid. Don't need to be anxious. What am I going to do when the problems come? Even if it looks like essential needs are taken away, I, I'm running out of food. I, I'm worried about shelter. I don't know how I'm going to pay the bills. I, don't, I have trouble getting the clothes I want. Even with those challenges, Jesus said, remember the flowers. Flowers survive, they're taken care of because the Heavenly Father knows what flowers need and He knows what you need too and the first thing you need is not food, shelter, clothing, retirement funds. We don't live in a world where the most important things are immediate and the later things come later. Instead, we have a, a wider, more cohesive picture that the future that we're headed toward changes the way we experience and react to today. Which means if you live by faith, you're not a person who says, someday the things of God will be relevant to me. Instead, if you can grasp this, if you can live by faith, trusting what you know about about God through his promises, you have at least theoretically the potential to live a life without worry, there, there's a world that you could get to where you're free from anxiety. There's a, there's a world where you could get to that you would feel blessed and okay even if you're broke on your last meal because we have the context of our greater story and we know how things are going to turn out. To live by faith then means that we don't have a really high need, a, a preference to, to focus now on the immediate. We don't have to quick use our life up before it's too late. We don't have a high time preference where I, I kind of prefer to, to use practical things now, 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 now. Now's the time to earn money. Now's the time to get my career. And later, I will value the things of God. <laughs> no. For where we're headed... And what's coming next? The restoration of, of body, the, the cleansing and purifying and reorganizing of all the chaos and things out of place in our mind, our instincts. All of that's going to be okay for the Lord is going to make everything new. Whew, that means that living by faith, I start to value differently what my stuff is for and what my words and actions and time is for we start to say things like yeah my flesh and my heart may fail God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever if I have him it's going to be okay I hope that you can gain this peace with yourself this sense of value as a person uh, credited with the righteousness of God, his favor and approval. 
I hope that you can learn to breathe more deeply and, and relax and let go of uh, the fear and the need to control circumstances as tightly as you can when life gets chaotic. I hope that you can set aside worry and release yourself more into the hands of your Savior God. And that's why setting aside earthly priorities to stay connected to the Lord, giving up time from your career to be with Christians in church around the words of God, it's valued to, to move from a desperate collection of wealth to a responsible earning of wealth that's partnered with a, a cheerful generosity for the well-being of others, for church and charity, of using our time on earth wisely, but also knowing that what we use our words and actions, our reputation, our relationships, our money for, you can use them to benefit people in a way that will will make their story in eternity blessed too. How life changes when we live with a view toward eternity, when we are rich toward God. What would it look like if I would start living my heavenly future already today?